Hello and welcome everybody, thank you guys for joining me to another class guide. My name is Wilkie and we're going to be talking about Lance Masters and this is going to be 2 in 1 build and no, I don't actually mean 2 in 1 as in Chaos and Raid build, but actually we're going to talk about both engravings Lance Masters have available. So for those people playing on Russia, this is going to be Superiority of the Stars and Full Moon Kick. For those of you on the Korean server or the Japanese one, the translations should be Climax or sometimes also be called Zenith. And full moon kick is self control. Without further ado, we're gonna jump into the superiority of the stars build first. Superiority of the stars is, well, in almost every aspect, superior than the other engraving, but there is a reason to use the other engraving as well. Outside of that, superiority of the stars has basically everything you want built in. It has a buff for movement speed, it has a buff for attack speed, it brings crit chance. It also brings crit damage and it also brings flat damage, so what's not to love? Really, this thing has pretty much built... It's a package that has everything built in, so what's not to love? Outside of that, we're just quickly gonna skim over the builds that I'm gonna be using. So, first of all, Descent of the Moon is a mobility tool. I don't really think I have to talk anything about that. Moonrise, the reason you use this skill is because you can see that in the description it says counterattack possible. For those of you who are longer in the game, you do know that there are Guardian Raids and later on Legion Raids that are very dependent on countering them. So, having an ability with a fairly short cooldown and a quick execution is really helpful. And in the luxury spot that we're in as Lance Masters to have that many skill buttons, I would highly advise taking this one. Moonblade Fury, another mobility tool. The reason you want this tripod here is because if you don't have the tripod here, this skill all of a sudden is completely different. So, if you want the movement, take Swift Throw. Also, you can do a little bit of an elimination cancel if you do Swift Throw, cancel the slash into Descent of the Moon if you really want to go for a long dash. So, do that, cancel with Spacebar into Descent of the Moon. Really, really good mobility rule. Ring of Light, the first hard hanging ability on the blue stance. Let's summon a Scarecrow here. Really, really good skill, really fast execution if you take the tripods, which I have here. I would always take quickly prepare because, well, yeah, more cooldown or like lower cooldowns is always better. Chilling Cold can be used for Chaos Dungeons, but really, I think this one's always better. Seizing the initiative is the way to go. All of the other abilities make this a bit clunkier to use, which is not ideal in any late game scenario, so the faster you get things off, the better it is. Repeat attack or ultimate force can be used for Chaos Dungeons. Awakening Dragon, the only selection here. For PvP, you could opt in, but since this is a PvE build, always go Awakening Dragon. Skywheel here, magic control, alternatively high maneuverability. I would always take the magic control one because the movement on this skill is eh, not really that great. In case you're not really a fan of this skill or you think the damage is poop, get the Tenacity Tripod instead and get some super armor for yourself to block incoming CCs. Piercing Light, by far one if not the best debuff in the entire game. As usual here, since this is a debuff, you want to have the skill as ready or as like ready as often as you can. So, Wounded Reduction is the way to go. Refined Reflexes, because otherwise it gets quite the messy animation here. This one, just yeet this out. This is the way you want this to be. And last but not least, Serious Vulnerability, because well, yeah, this is actually what makes the skill grant an 18% higher crit rate for yourself and also your teammates, making this one if not the strongest AD buffs in the entire game. Present Boon, you want impressive craftsmanship because rotation also increases damage but makes the skill be longer. Internal Reserve, really straightforward. Destructive Whirlwind, I just think this is always better to have a tornado. Some people do like Endless Attack. First of all, you can zoom around if you wanted to, but... It also deals damage while charging at the enemy. I just think the same rule applies here. Just yeet this out and let it sit there early straight forward. Last but not least, we do have Eclipse Path. This is a gauge gainer. If you don't really need the cooldown reduction, I would always take the cooldown reduction because this flows very good into the rotation. But I think this is just the best thing to go for. And you want the attack speed tripod to make this thing go very fast. Because if you have this one here, it actually becomes a very long channel. And this is also a skill that you would use ideally in Chaos Dungeon, but you don't really have to. Lance Master is very well set up to do anything without that. That's it for Blue Stance build. Red Stance build, we have Sunstroke. I only have a rune in Sunstroke because it's the shortest cooldown we have. So basically just proc the lead. 
nothing else there. Light Blades is a filler to get, like, it's a pretty decent gauge gainer, but outside of that, not really it. I am personally a fan of Scorching Wave. I know a lot of people, or not necessarily a lot of people, but Korean meta is a slightly bit different. In case you prefer Mantra of Dawn, just take all the points out of Scorching Wave and put them into Mantra of Dawn. That works just as fine. I think Mantra of Dawn is much better off to be used defensively instead of offensively, because I think of it as a panic button in case you screw up, in case you're mispositioned, in case something is happening and you can't dodge, you can't react. Just press this button because it grants you a pretty hefty shield, which in my opinion is always better than to use this offensively. Because, um, well, yeah, you're avoiding your chance of having an extra shield in a dire situation where you might need this. Scorching Wave, I definitely want more damage because my rotation has enough cooldown reduction, so I don't need this. If you don't have enough cooldown reduction, use the quickly prepared tripod. Critical Threat goes hand in hand with Wild Beast Psy because this is what makes the skill have 100% crit rate. Now, a little side note here the Critical Threat tripod increases crit rate even further, which is stupid considering we have 50% here and 50% here on the base chance. So don't ever increase this tripod, only increase this tripod here, because 50 plus 50 is, well, you can see it, 100% crit, so yeah. <laughs> Goes without saying. Solar Eclipse, I would always take the Find Weakness one, because the range of the skill is fairly decent, and it also is re-aimable, so I can move my mouse around even after casting, and hitting that is not that crazy, so I would always take more damage. Quickly prepare, definitely. This skill has a very long cooldown, and this quickly prepare tripod is incredible. Like, 10 second cooldown reduction on a skill that has a 24 second cooldown is massive, my boys, I tell you. Compressed ring, same rule here. Guaranteed crit and increased crit chance on basically anything that's a rate boss or higher. So it goes without saying. Some people like to take this one, I think it's meh. For PvP, this is an option, but for PvE, all pretty much points to compressed ring. We talked about Mantra of Dawn already, last but not least, Red Dragon Flight, our highest hitting spell, our nuke, so to be speak. I would always take the cooldown reduction, you can take the power balance, but the skill already charges fairly quickly, 0.7 seconds is not too crazy, given the nature that you can actually move the skill quite a bit around, it's also a ranged ability, so making this ideal used in a lot of scenarios where the boss does like AoEs around themselves. You know, let's just say that this area here is covered with an AoE. I'm just gonna move out and just yoink this and still be able to deal damage. Destructive power is what makes the skill auto crit. So no matter if I do a back attack or not, this skill is always guaranteed to crit, even if I don't fully charge it. And last but not least, find weakness. Well, yeah, pretty much here. Some people do like flawless execution. Look, flawless execution. I think for PvE, this one is way too obnoxious and way too dangerous to use because you always have to set yourself at the right position here to be able to hit at the point here. So you can see that we have 2 million crits if we hit with the tip. This is sharp blunt negative here, so 1.9 million, 2 million, so you can see what the damage is normally like. And if we were close enough, you can see that our damage is now lower. And most of the time you're actually going to be fairly close to the boss because everything else is a close range spell, right? So you're going to be doing this, and then you're close range anyway, so you don't really walk back to land this one, so always take find weakness. Right? This is it in terms of skill builds. As far as Awakening goes, Zenith Retribution deals higher damage, so that is pretty much the way to go in my opinion. The only benefit Milky Way has is the fact that it is a ranged ability. So same rule kind of here compared to Rat Dragon Flight. If you want to yoink this out while the enemy is doing something, you can do so. But Zenith has higher damage. Also, Zenith has a perk, which let me recharge myself here. If we're going to do Zenith on Red Stance without any attack speed, you can see that this skill takes 2.2 seconds. If we're gonna switch to blue stance, and by the way, blue stance is definitely the stance you want to use your awakening in. You can see that we're much faster. We're shaving off 0.5 seconds of this ability, so Zenith actually scales with attack speed, which makes it even more to be used in blue stance or moon stance. So in my opinion, always use Zenith Retribution. It's just overall better to be used. It deals higher damage. It can also be canceled midway in case you're seeing the boss moves away or there's an AoE or something coming up. You can just cancel it in case you need to do that. And that sums it up for my Zenith build. I will be including a quick rotation on what I typically, ideally, would do in lab situations. 
Naturally, this doesn't apply to real fights because, well, bosses move, but here's the rotation that I would usually So here's use. an example of a rotation that I would be using. As you can see here, I do have the Tyrant's Awakening buffs on, so I have naturally higher cooldown reduction than you do. We have no cooldown reduction or anything else here, so these are the default settings. So what I typically would start off is Red Stance here, just fire a few skills so we can get. And now rotation starts. And boom. And we're the moment you go back to sun stands, you, in my opinion, always would want to start with solar eclipse because that is the skill that we can use again. And now our blue skills are back up and we're going to rotate. You don't really have any specific order in which you can rotate, but you can see that our skills are pretty much back up here. Bridge the gap here. Bridge the gap here. Almost back up for solar eclipse. Also, the reason Solar Eclipse wants to be used, or you ideally want to use it, is because then you can use Solar Eclipse twice per buff rotation, right? So I use it once. And I can use a second Solar Eclipse with the same sun buff. And this is, like I said, the ideal rotation. I do know in most raids you will not ever be able to do this because bosses move around, stuff like that. But this is a, an example rotation of skills that you could be using. So going over to the full moon build, we're actually not going to be using training zone, but I was actually using full moon myself for quite a bit. So I do have also hands on gameplay experience in that regard. I do have to say, though, that the engravings that I do run are not ideal for the full moon build. So ideally, you would probably not want to run awakening, but a different one, maybe sharp blunt. And you would also want to run the deadland set like the one with crit damage and crit chance increases. Because, uh, well, we're not going to get crit rate from our moon buffs now because we no longer can switch. So this is not necessarily the most optimal buff. The idea still stands. You want high agility because you want movement speed and cooldown reduction. And you want some built-in crit in order to avoid white numbers from popping up. In terms of skills, this one's a bit trickier because Moonrise is still very good in terms of counter. But in case you really don't like that counter, you don't want to have it. The same rule applies here. You want to have Descent of the Moon to get more mobility. The next skill here is Bite Onslaught. We want to take Critical Threat because well, we, we want to get any crit we can. Pretty much straightforward here. Extra damage and cutting makes the skill do 7 slashes here. This feels incredibly satisfying to be honest. So definitely one if not the best skill in my opinion to be used. And as you can see my rune procced. And this goes out pretty quickly. If you have some movement speed and a rune or something, this is actually really nice to use. Second skill here is Moonblade Fury. We're going to be using Stunning Blade to change this into a 4 skill, or like a 4 swipe use. Internal Reserve, pretty straightforward, and find weakness. This one makes the skill look incredibly nice, not gonna lie, but this one definitely yields better damage, so always take this one. For Chaos Dungeons, you could opt in for the wave ones though. It's fairly similar to Bite Onslaught in my opinion. So these are like your main additional damaging abilities on Blue Sense. If we go to Ring of Light, this one is exactly the same way as in the Zenith or Superior Age of the Stars. So there not, isn't really anything to talk about in that regard. Skywheel is definitely going to be different. So here you are. I don't even know why I have this tripod. In my opinion, still take the mana tripod unless you never ever run out of mana, you can use this one. But the main reason I don't like this one is because it's easy to actually misposition yourself with this. So this, this might just be the reason I took this. Either way, I typically would like, I would personally take the tenacity one here because this skill with a double rotation lasts fairly long. So there's a very high chance that you will get slapped out of it. Furious Pressure allows you to use this skill twice. I don't really think I have to talk anything about this. To be fair though, I think I love this skill. This is one if not the best looking skill of Lance Masters. Unfortunately, the performance is not that great. Still one of uh, the most beloved skills. You can also go for this one. To be honest though, I think uh, you're, you're always losing out if you're not using the double one. Also, you don't have to use two by the way, right? So you can only use one and delay the second one a bit if you want to drag on with the tenacity piercing light same thing here still gonna be your bread and butter and this is gonna be all the more important now that we don't have any built-in crit so this debuff is really important for you now so make sure to get 
this cooldown tripod as high as you can. Obviously, I only have it at level 1 because I'm unlucky with tripods. Refined reflexes and serious vulnerability. Last but not least, and this is probably the key difference about this ability here, Full Moon Strike. Now, some people will want to take a last argument to have a bit of a higher burst. So this one here, yoink. And to be fair, I think this is a very satisfying ability this way, but so we're critting for 1.6, 1.6, 1.7, 7-ish, okay? The reason we want this one is now we're going to be dealing lower overall damage unless we're going to be critting with both. And even if we're critting with both hits, the main reason we're taking this one... Actually, there we go. Let me see if I can crit both. So if you can see, if we're critting both of those abilities, we're actually dealing almost the same damage as we would with last argument. And this ability also allows you to redirect your move and also adds a little bit of movement. Plus, it's probably single-handedly the best ability for Chaos Dungeons because it pulls mobs together. So in my opinion, I would always run this one here. Especially since the extra damage on this one is only on crit. So if you don't have a high crit rate, Touch of Death might be better. If you do have sufficient enough crit, then by all means go for Last Argument, Higher Burst. And it's a really satisfying slam. As you can see, non-crit. 1.6, 1.7. So it's a little bit more damage than that. If we're comparing that to 1.5 million, if both of those hits were to be critting. But as you can see, my crit rate is garbage. So it's not actually that easy to get two consistent crits going on. And even if we do, we might actually end up having Sharp Blunt interfering. My god. Anyways, you get the idea. And this is it for the second build. Like I said, I don't run the ideal Full Moon setup. I do have to admit though, Full Moon feels incredibly fun. It's super fun to play. It comes with a lot of caveats and drawbacks such as losing any ranged ability, losing your counter ability, and generally just being a lot more item dependent than otherwise Lance Masters are. The Lance Masters are by far the best functioning classes even without high level gear and high level things because of the crit tripods on the sun stands and the overall just incredible stat boost you can get on moon stands. So unfortunately until we actually may get a buff in the future on full moon again I do have to advise people against it simply because the performance on superiority of the stars is just so much better. It's literally superior to full moon unfortunately. However in case you just really dig the full moon playstyle. I played with this for around two months actually. I did clear Bolton with it. So it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly viable. You can do garden raids. You can do everything with it. But superiority of the stars is, uh, well, superior. And that is it. As usual, thank you for being here. As usual as well, timestamps in the description. So if you want to jump around into anything specifically, Feel free to leave that out here. Outside of that, I do also stream, so feel free to check out my Twitch channel, typically only on Mondays, but any other days will typically also be announced. Outside of this, I do hope this was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time, so do stay safe and take care.